Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu, he's age. We're back for more anime night in the dojo. This is going to be Skeleton Night, Season 1, Episode 7, starting the second half of the season. Pretty excited. Um, coming off last episode, we learned that Ark is pretty much just brimming with power and no actual skill. <laughs> he, he got a sword lesson from Ariane's mother, who uh, made him look really dumb. <laughs> that, that was impressive. So, um... Uh, another reason to appreciate this show. Ark is not overpowered in every sense of the word. So that's kind of nice. Show has uh, all kinds of stuff going for it, and uh, definitely looking forward to see how they handle the second half of the season. But uh, I'd say that was a solid midpoint to the season. Ark coming to the realization that, you know, yes, he can, you know, wyvern slash all he wants, but, uh, you know, if he comes up against a talented opponent, they could probably whittle him down, even if he does outstrength them. Yeah, I mean... Wyvern Slash is all good and all, but you still need to hit the opponent. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Um, the big thing that uh, I, I kind of we kind of derp talking about this last episode. It's not a huge deal because there's no way it's going to work. Um, but the whole like him uncursing his hand last episode and him freaking out like, oh god, can I just uncurse myself with you know the uncurse spell and that's it? There's no way that's going to be real. It's going to be a temporary like, oh yeah, you know what I mean. It's going to have to be some kind of like world level magic that helps him out. You know what I mean? Because it's look at the show title. All right, they're they're not going to resolve that in six episodes. Okay. <laughs> um, no, unless this is just like a one shot. You know what I mean? If they pull like a Devils Apart timer and they, they do one season and then like eight or nine years from now we get season two. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to be the case, uh, especially with how well received this was. So, um, you know, we just came off Overlord talking about, you know, questionable decision making and, and leaving stuff out, of, out from the source material. Um, this might be something that I set aside time to go read it. You know what I mean? just to see how much of a difference there possibly is since we just came off that discussion in overlord from yesterday so um you know it's it's I still need to at some point or another find the time and motivation to go back into fin finishing catching up on overlord because i stopped like recall correctly around like early book six which is like the end mid to end of like season two right so yeah, just since we were talking about that in yesterday's video, um, it's just kind of interesting to see. We might do the retrospective thing that we talked about, you know, like watching a series like this and then going back and like, you know, um, reading the uh, source material and then doing like a retrospective, like, okay, you know, how, how do we feel about the show now kind of deal. Um, but this, this has been fantastic so far for a season one, just like without any source material knowledge, I don't have any complaints. Now, uh, do people have complaints? Who knows? Let us know in the comments if you feel like it. Uh, if you read the source material and it's not doing stuff that should be in here. But um, as as the anime sits just in a bit of itself, it's been great. So, um, you know, however they choose to do anything with the rest of the season, I think it's going to be fun. You know, we got into more politicking. They, they've set up all kinds of politics in the season already. Very subtly sometimes, but it's there, and they it wasn't overbearing, and I can appreciate that as well. But there's all kinds of stuff just going around, you know, politic wise, world wise, that you know they pointed out, and it's there. And uh, so there, there's all kinds of stuff on the table that they can use for the series going forward. So clearly, it seems like this author um, is you know setting a, a, a reasonably long series. You know what I mean in in source material form you know whether it's a book light novel um manga whatever this is so um, i'm actually looking at it right now because i was interested apparently the author did it originally as an actual like just full-on book series like an actual novelization uh and was doing that for a few years and then started doing it as a light novel read like restarted it as a light novel and is still doing the light novel to this day. Uh, and they started back in 2015. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, um, as it stands, just for the story, there's all kinds of stuff on the table. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, we discussed uh, the whole uh, the princess stuff 
probably happening here at some point, maybe this episode, uh, in the next episode or two, because, you know, just the traveling politics, the princess moving around doing stuff, it has to be here at some point, you know what I mean? We talked about that last time, so I I'd be kind of surprised if we didn't get it, like, at all, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. based on the way the show started, and then, you know, the whole um, politics with the, the two princes and the princess uh, from that one kingdom, um, you know, it should be interesting. Yeah. So which one thing I will clarify real fast about the whole like novel into light novel thing is this is actually pretty common. A lot of light novels start off as something else like a web novels are a big thing. Like that's actually uh, how Overlord started. It was originally a web novel. Then after the web novel went for a while and got popular enough the author decided to reboot the whole thing as an actual light novel, which is where a lot of the like the random complaints on overlord come from on like some of the changes that he made like uh for example the whole thing with like arche or like in the original in in the light novel she just dies but in uh the original web novel uh i ended up giving her to schultz here as a present and she becomes one of schultz here as like vampire servants and still hangs around sometimes uh well then um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll check out the source material at some point, I'm sure. But, uh, as for going forward, I mean, we've already talked about it. So, you know, go check out last week's video and stuff like that if you haven't seen it. Um, but for this one, yeah, probably princess stuff. They're, they're still in the elf village. Um, yeah, I, I'm up for whatever, really. <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me. So, um, it should be fun. So, uh, you got anything going into this one, Age? Uh, not really. I, this, like I said, I typically don't have a whole lot to say prior to the episode to begin with, but this show especially, there's not a whole lot to say usually going into it. Right. Anyway, let's push some buttons and see what happens this week, shall we? I'm ready for this intro. Let's get hype. Here goes something. We'll be safe. And try just the tip of the finger. Uncurse! Just the tip! And he gets the whole damn hand. <laughs> what? Just in case we forgot from last time. I sense treachery is afoot. <laughs> Those wolves should be appearing any time now. The way she dances around the battlefield is a reminder that strength can only take you so far. <laughs> Raw power Meanwhile, and just shows its weakness when clinging to his every part of his armor over here. <laughs> so until I have a better grasp on my ranged and magic skills, I need to be careful with fighting enemies like these. But if it's just what is that? I was gonna say, it's odd if that thing doesn't disappear when it's broken, but disappears when the mob dies. Yeah, keep announcing out loud who's in there. <laughs> Thank you so much for secret diplomatic mission. Well, now that I think about it. Using magic that can revive the dead might not have been the best idea. Especially since I just so happened to resurrect a princess. I probably just changed the course of history. <laughs> I'm sure it's not too big of a deal, right, Ponta? Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, it's about time you came back. What took you so long? Did I'd you rather take you all at once. What'd you say, you little bum? I'll make you eat those words! Shall we lend a hand to the young lady? Judging from the looks of it, we would only get in her way. Pretty sure the ninja is fine. <laughs> I'd hate to be on her bad side. <laughs> lady Orion, I think I've gotten on her bad side! Well, maybe you shouldn't have been staring at her. So, we meet again. Well, that's that, and hey, check it out. Ponta meets wolf in real life, right? Dog, close enough. Uh, I doubt they could have pulled off a wolf, so dog works. 
Um, yeah, keeping up that gimmick. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, I guess... <laughs> our arc is now a guardian angel. Um, <laughs> the scene did explain something that I was kind of wondering where the hell his shield was the whole time. It's just on his back, on his lower back. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really use it very often, but he yeah. does have it. He does have it. He he's only used it one time, and I was kind of wondering, like, is this one of those pull it out of the ass situations? No, it's just right there on his lower back. So, all right, that that confirms that. So that was interesting. Um, we we had the the return of the the weird ring, and I landed on it, um, which does seem to, based on how this uh, um, ghost wolf acted afterwards. Um, some sort of mind control device or yeah. even something or other not just this is you know uh you know all of this whoever made these rings you know they, they just wear them as signification or something or as like a, a way to keep them in line no this seems to be just like no this is just open hostility constantly whether the wolves would have been openly hostile or not which it appears the pack leader is reasonably intelligent based on what happened in this episode so yeah no they said that in the, like the little freaking breakdown of what they go uh, what the haunted wolves were that the pack leaders are more or less sentient and they are quite it's considered to be quite intelligent right which is one of the main things that's supposed to make them dangerous is the fact that they are isn't it's not just a rapid pack of rapid pack of wolves it's they're actually a coordinated unit right so that was interesting um, solid, almost like, uh, Hatsume's, uh, My Baby Academia going on over here, mm -hmm. <laughs> which they didn't bring that back in MHA last season, which was a mistake. Uh, this was pretty damn hilarious. Hopefully they use it in the future. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got the whole thing with his curse, you know, the fact that it's a persistent curse, um, the fact that his you know, uncursed spell only lasts for, like, literally two seconds. Um, you know, kind of surprising, really. But, uh, you know, it just further shows that he's probably going to need much stronger magic or, at the very least, attempt to, like, uncurse his entire form all no, at so once kind of deal. Based on what happened here, I'm pretty sure it is the case of it's a self-perpetuating curse, so... Even if you remove the curse, it's just going to immediately reapply itself. So he needs to find some way to actually destroy the curse entirely or destroy whatever's causing the curse. Slash, he needs to find some way to decurse himself perpetually as well. Right. Like, basically get like some like necklace or ring or something like that, that as long as he's wearing it, the curse is uh, removed. Right. So that, that could be something that's on the table um, just for even like a minor usage, you know, like an item that he'd have to like recharge, um, but he could use it for a, a certain amount of time just to, you know, not have to worry about his skeletal form like everywhere. Just to temporarily pass himself as human. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I guess... Uh, Ponta's really living up to the spirit animal thing here because apparently she just flat out sensed hostility. Mm hmm. Because that's what happened here. She sensed hostility and just went off and, you know, wanted to help. So that, that that's kind of an interesting mechanic for uh, Ponta as just like a, for lack of a better term, like her class uh, as a spirit beast. So that's, that's interesting. Um, not only is she a free pass to, uh, you know, being a, a good person or whatever, if she's hanging out with you, uh, she can just straight up sense emotion, I guess, and just sniff it out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this more or less does explain why the free passing thing is a thing, because if he was actually evil, this is, would be her response. Right. <laughs> and since there is so much concentrated evil going on in Cloaked and Hooded Town over here, which... Uh, one can only assume that it was the uh, the uh, super shady prince that, you know, sent this guy off uh, to, uh, you know, have his sister murdered. Which, man, 
some serious family drama going on around here. That, yeah, uh, typical are, royal politics. Yeah, typical royal politics. Um, but we, we, I guess we didn't get too dark with this one. They just flat out uh, went straight for the kill. But, um, you know, uh, I assume that Ark would have had a uh, much harder time healing them if the wounds were, like, far more fatal than they were, you know? Because for all intents and yeah. purposes, the princess got stabbed through the shoulder. That's not something that's going to kill yeah, it you. Was, it was lower. It was in the breast. So it was like, that was like more like a lung shot. I suppose. It's, it's one of the cases where both her and the maid, it was more of a shock kill than anything. Right. Like she would have probably died to the wound anyway, because it is the lung. But... So, like, without immediate medical care, she would have probably end up just suffocating. Right. But, I mean, you, you totally can't live with only one lung. Yeah. But still, so long, I mean... So long as you're kept from suffocating immediately after the injury. Yeah. But, hey, uh, to that end, we got another... Uh, um, for, for anybody who may have forgotten, um, as they were shooting Ark in the back here... For anybody who forgot, uh, Ark's cloak is pretty serious business when it comes to just flat out resist. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that was neat to just as like a like a little thing since the little things have been uh, the point of interest recently for the stuff we've been watching. Uh, that was cool that they brought that up, you know, uh, just for the cloak serving its actual purpose, you know. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then we just got the flat out um, him using regenerate. Like a, here, here's a new spell that he hasn't used yet but it does are its limitations have already been set like the one guy that they showed off that like really got beat to hell he he couldn't do anything about it yeah no this is basically just actual regeneration it's just a heal over time effect but apparently with the added effect of it can revive the recent dead as long as their injuries are within the bounds of the spell to heal right so I'd assume that this is the best he can do for resurrection magic. You know what I mean? Like, say, if somebody got their head lobbed off and he was there sight on scene immediately, I doubt he could do anything about it, even with this spell. You know what I mean? Yeah, he might have a higher tier spell because, you know, once again, he does have class uh, class in, like, Bishop and stuff like that. Oh. Um, but this is probably his go-to and slash or what the most he's willing to risk in this situation. Right. <laughs> Though he uh, quickly came to the realization, did I just change history? And be right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you just changed history and further inserted yourself into more nonsense that you were trying to lay low. All right. He now has two members of the royal family indebted to him. Right. And now they're going to be geeking out over the white knight that saved them. <laughs> yeah, now, now that the princess has had a direct encounter with them, even though it was only while she was still, like, pseudo-delirious from her injury, she still did see a white knight. Right, and how many... Radiating magic, so as soon as she talks to her sister, it's gonna be like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah, as, how many guys like this are walking around, you know what I mean? Two, three, four, ten tops, you know what I mean, just in a fantasy setting? How many guys like Ark you think are out there in this world? Not a lot. <laughs> Uh, especially since he's wearing his armor from a game, which could be... Uh, there have been multiple instances this season where there have been people like, the fuck kind of armor is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So obviously, yeah, once it's, once again, it's really unique. Yeah, once again, while this... It's another New World situation where it's like, while this world does have some aspects from his game in it, like similar creatures and whatnot, it's still a totally different world from his game. Right. So, you know, it is what it is, but it's... While we did get the princess stuff that we were uh, talking about, I didn't think they'd go this route, but they kind of kind of seeded it with the uh, whole, like, you know, she mentioned the both of her brothers and the one that's, like, obviously dealing with the elf, elf slave trading and how she, uh, you know, spoke out against it. So, obviously, he's not going to want her to go to these negotiations, so... He, yeah. has a he has a vested interest in uh, seeing the treaty with the elves broken, so like, he doesn't want the peace talks to actually go through. Right. Plus, she is vocally opposing him, so like double reason to try to get her out of the picture. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things with like royal politics or those things in general where, uh, you know, 
you can like vocally oppose it in a way, but just be like, well, you're just going to do whatever you want anyway, so I'm just going to go over here and then like go behind his back to the father and say, hey, can I just go on a diplomatic mission without anybody knowing and then just go do it anyway? <laughs> like whenever you vocally oppose something like that, you better be ready to cut cover your ass, basically. So mm -hmm. and make sure you don't have any traitors in your midst. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was that was definitely a thing. So um, he is so further again, ingrained he, himself into the, this kingdom's politics. Which, once again, she did suspect something was up, but clearly didn't react fast enough. Right. She was in too much of a hurry. Mm hmm. But yeah, this this sequence was pretty interesting. You know, they they, they pretty they there was all kinds of just you know calls to just different things going on in the story, just that this author has put out there. You know, the ring on on the beasts. You know what I mean? We talked about that. We got back to the kingdom politics with the princess here. Um, obviously, the overarching thing going on with Ariane and stuff like that. The the elf slave trade stuff continued, um, and then at the very end of the episode. We talked about it. She's back again after a couple episodes, looking like Naoto from P4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised they actually immediately called her out as female in there because it very much, like, at first glance looked until she, like, actually stands in front, like, it stands front facing like that. It actually very much looked like she was trying to undercover as a male. Right. But even just from the back, they immediately called her out as female. So I was like, huh. I, I kind of figured that they were. She was going to try to go for some undercover shenanigans, not simply just you know wearing a hat to hide the fact that she is a beast kid. Right. Which once again is a much better disguise than a bow. <laughs> Shots fired <laughs> at Blake. I know it's terrible. <laughs> Significantly less <laughs> conspicuous than a bow that looks like cat ears. Yeah. <laughs> so solid disguise, mad props. But um, we assume she'd be back at some point and. Hey, here she is. So, um, well, I'm still not sold that she'll be joining the party, you know, in episode eight. Um, you know, we'll see. It's it's possible. Like I said, I figured from the beginning that she's either going to be a case where it's going to be a case where either she only shows up periodically or that she would show up in the later half. And we're technically in the later half now, so she could technically be introduced as a main character now. Right. So that'd be close enough, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, Episode 8 is like final uh, quarter of the season, so it's uh, pretty reasonable, I suppose. But yeah, th this episode at all, pacing-wise, you know, it hit every like major bullet point going on with the story so far. And, uh, you know, Ark is had that also, he also had that internal mo uh, just like dialogue with himself. It's like, you know, maybe I should ask Arianne for like legit combat training, you know. Is, uh, once, in, once again, he has all these abilities and stuff like that, but he has no actual experience with using them. Right. So, um, like know. that's a largely what this whole thing with the regen ability was was basically him just testing out what's the limits of this. Right. I know what they are on paper, but I have no clue what actually constitutes as too late or too injured. Yep. And now he has a reasonable baseline for it. So, uh, at least on the injury front. Right. Maybe not so much on uh, how long they've been dead kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he was there like within like minutes of them dying. Yeah. So yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. The Ponta thing, you know, just solid across the board. So uh, that was that was pretty damn impressive. So uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it'd be interesting to see how uh, this turns out and... Um, what they do with it because we did see her last time we saw her she was like standing with another member of her like village or something like the big like super beefy guy that yeah she was standing with a, on the roof it was another like really tall male beastkin right in a ninja outfit so obviously they're doing something and whatever they're doing we'll find out ninja stuff i'm up for ninja stuff i'm always up for ninja stuff unless it involves ninja the streamer then not so much <laughs> they clearly have some sort of agenda against either the royal family or at very least the eastern prince right because they did not only direct uh arc uh, directly against the local lord but also immediately bombed the damn palace as soon as he was done right 
just to just to make sure it's like nah <laughs> so uh, our arc and uh, arian came away with the all, all their gold and you know then they didn't have the castle to go back to just got blown up <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this was this was great. No complaints. Looking forward to next week. Hit all the points. What more do you want? Got angry Ponta. Um, I guess she's like part flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did notice that the fact that she like is capable of like uh, actually doing the whole like skin gliding shenanigans. Yeah, so learning all kinds of stuff this week. It was fun. But, uh, that's all I got. Anything else, Sage? Not really. Don't think anyway. Oh, I guess one other, one other thing was the freaking teleports behind you meme that was going on between him and the wolf. Yeah, it was borderlining on Speed of Sound Sonic in Genos territory over there. <laughs> Why teleport behind you? No, I teleport behind you. Right. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. Little things, man. Just gotta find them and appreciate them. But the big things were also all a big deal in this episode as well. So, uh, you know, it had it all. No complaints. And looking forward to next week, obviously. So... Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond time you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. The Skeleton Night, Season 1, Episode 7. Solid start to the second half of the season, I'd say. Very well done. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you to watch. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. <laughs>